Father's Day. Or as Joel said to me this morning, Happy Farmer's Day, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Farmer's Day. And I was like, thanks sunshine. <laughs> war, war, war. <laughs> Happy Farmer's Day. But we do want to bless you if you are a dad today, your dad, your granddad, stepdad, whatever um, you are to someone. Um, we want to bless you. Um, it is the greatest privilege, the greatest job title you could ever have to be called someone's dad. So if you're a dad, granddad in this place, you have been pouring your life into a young person, an old person, whatever age they are now. Um, we want to pray God's blessing on you. So Father, I pray for every father, grandfather here today in this place. Lord, your blessing upon them. Lord, as they lean into you, Lord, as their children lean into them. Lord, I pray for wisdom, for love, for compassion, for mercy, for knowledge to roll out of them and flood out of them into their loved ones. Lord, would you continue to bless them? Would you continue to use them to be a blessing to their families and to their communities in Jesus' name? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Romans 8, 14 to 17 says this. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit, for the Spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you receive brought you about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now if we are children, then we are heirs. Heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. And so it had been alluded to today. For some, today is a, is a tough day. Father's Day is another day that brings about emotions, brings about um, either good emotions in us or brings about bad emotions in us. Father's Day is either the day that you look forward to, or it's one of those days that you hope you can whiz through undetected and unscathed. For some here today, in person or watching online, it will be a day that brings up memories and emotions of a dad. They can be fond, they can be lovely, they can be memorable. For others it brings up pain, it brings up frustration and it brings up anguish. And let's be honest, in this place, Chris has just shared that Jesus cares about our physical health, our emotional health, our spiritual health. Jesus cares about every aspect of our lives. And we need to talk about it in this place. We need to be open and honest with one another. We may have a great trick of putting on a mask when it comes to daylight today. That we can just say, yeah, I'm all right, but actually deep down inside, it's not. A lot of the songs we sang today, I chose the backing for a reason. There's images on the screen, there's a lot of images of water. There's one image of like a waterfall, and I chose that today because I wanted us to know that God's love for each and every one of us can wash away the pain and the hurt that is there. Some of us have wonderful experiences of our dads. We've been so blessed. I know Sandra always shares about her dad because she'd been blessed to have a, a Christian dad, someone that poured life into her. On the flip side, some of us might have had experiences where our dads are the last people we want to see on the face of the earth. And I'll share my testimony with you quickly. And I've shared it before, so apologies if you've heard this again and again but when I became a Christian at the age of 15 not that long ago well actually it was that long ago 22 years ago now so I've been a Christian longer now than I was a non-Christian which is quite amazing when I became a Christian my heart changed and God's love poured into me because of the hurt that I had experienced a natural dad a biological father who I never knew and only knew in the last kind of couple of years of his life. A stepdad who was there, wasn't there, was there, wasn't there, back in and out of our lives. Pain, pain, pain. Anything that I associated with a dad, I just felt pain until I met my Heavenly Father, who poured his love into me. And when I got baptised and God started speaking to me, I got out of the waters 
And you know that moment when you're baptised and it's that joy, that adulation. I've died to my old self and now I'm, I'm risen in a new life in Christ. And the first thing God said to me was, forgive your dad. And I said, huh, which one? And he said, both of them. And that put me on a journey of having to release them of the pain that I was holding on. And I want to encourage you today, if you are in that place, if you're holding on to hurts, you are holding on to them. Jesus says, let it go. Let it go into my care. Let it go into what I can bring about healing into that situation. Because the hurt, the pain, is what you're holding on to. And God's got so much more for you than that. If you let it go and let him come in and bring healing. So let me pray for us, anyone now. Lord, in this moment, if anyone is holding on to any hurt, any pain, anything, Lord, Father, that they are holding on to from their experience with their earthly father, stepfather, <coughs> or whatever it may be, Lord, I pray that by your spirit, you would help them to let it go and open up their arms to surely pray for us only one, Lord, that they could have that hug that only you can give, that love that only you can bring. Lord, I pray, Lord, that they would open up their whole life, their whole emotions, their whole hurt, their whole pain to you, Lord, that you can bring healing and life into their situation in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's look back at our scriptures, shall we? Romans 8, 14, 17. Let me read it again. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves. We sang it today. We're no longer slaves to fear, but I am a child of God. Great song choice, Alan. You didn't know what I'm preaching on. Rather, that we don't have to live in fear, but rather the spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship. Ladies, just to let you know in this room, you are adopted into sonship, but all the men in the place, we are the of Christ. So let's just get that out of the way, okay? We just, 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 just break that over. We are children of God. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. For if indeed we share in his suffering in order that we may also share in his glory. Do you know, when we become Christians, a number of things happen to us. We transfer from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. We were dead in sin and now we become alive in Christ. We become God's righteousness, not by our own doing, as David reminded us last week, but by his mercy and by his grace. We were once orphans and now we're adopted into God's family. And we can cry out to Father God, the God of heaven, the God of the universe. We can cry out to him, Abba, Father. Jesus said this in Matthew 14, 36. And he said, Abba, Father, all these things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but your will. We get to call the Father in heaven the same name that Jesus called him. That's what we can do because of what Jesus has done for us, that we now become co-heirs. We become in the same realm children of God. Jesus is the child of God. He is and we become the same, children of God. And you know, Jesus had a wonderful relationship with his Father. Jesus and the Father's relationship demonstrates to us what a relationship with our children should look like. So no pressure for us as parents in the room. But this is what we're attaining to, okay? But I want to just show you ten attributes about Jesus' relationship with his Father. Number one. Jesus is a reflection of his Father. John 5, 17 to 19. It says in his defence, Jesus says to them, My Father is always at work to this very day, and I too am working. Then Jesus gave them this answer. Very truly I tell you, the Son can do nothing by himself. He can only do, and can only do, and do only what he sees the Father doing, because whatever the Father does, the Son does. Jesus works as he sees the Father working. Jesus imitates the Father. 
So as we're celebrating Father's Day today, we're celebrating what Jesus and the Father had. We, in the same way, are encouraged by the Apostle Paul when Paul says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. When Christ was imitating the Father, so for each and every one of us, I'm not putting myself in the same position as the Apostle Paul, but imitate me as I imitate Christ. Each and every one of us should be imitating Christ because he's imitating what he sees the Father does. Number two, Jesus is dependent on the Father. John 5, 19, first part of the verse, it says, Jesus gave the answer, very truly I tell you, the Son can do nothing by himself. Jesus is equal in deity with God. As part of the Trinity, yet he submits himself to the Father in his human role as the Son of Man. Walking on planet Earth, Jesus walks humbly before God the Father. What do we need to do, church? We need to walk humbly before our God. We need to imitate Jesus, walking humbly before God in all that we do. Number three, Jesus has faith in the Father's love for him. John 5, verse 20 says, For the Father loves the Son and shows him all that he does. Yes, and he will show him even greater works than these, so you will be amazed. Jesus' security came from the promise of, and the act of love. He doesn't put his faith in human beings or human beings' love for him. Look at the triumphant, emf, uh, the triumphant entry into Jerusalem. A few days before Jesus was crucified, one minute they're singing Hosanna, Hosanna, here he comes in the name of the Lord, and less than a week later they're crying, crucify him, crucify him. Jesus didn't put his trust in human love, but he put his trust in the Father's love for him. John uh, 2.24 says, But Jesus would not entrust himself to them, for he knew all people. Jesus' identity and his faith was found in the Father's love for him, not in man's praise. It's a great lesson for us to learn, church, that the eyes of who is looking down on us are important to the eyes of one, Jesus Christ and him alone, what he's doing, what we're doing for him. Number four, the Father allows Jesus to see himself at work. Again, John um, 5 verse 20, the Father shows him all he all, sorry, shows him all that he himself is doing. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all things he himself does. And he shows him great works than these that you may marvel. Do you know when we come to know what God is doing in our lives, the more time we spend with him, the more we'll see what he's doing. I love it as a pastor because I'm, I get to talk to lots of people in different types of roles, in different, in different circumstances. But it's those who are spending time in God's presence can see God working out. And it's those who struggle to spend time in God's presence So I can't see what God's doing right now. If you spend time in that relationship, in that communion that we just talked about earlier on with God, we get to see him working out things in our lives. We get to marvel at the things. We get to see those those coincidences that happen and you all of a sudden you think that's not a coincidence, that's God working out in my life but I can identify that these things I'm going to be marvelling at because of what God is doing and that's what Jesus did with the, his relationships with the disciples, that's what he, he portrayed, that's what he showed the disciples, that they lived together for three years of his ministries, that he poured into them, he gave them those experiences that he had with his father. Number five, Jesus trusts and has confidence in his Father. And greater works than these he will show him, so you may marvel. Jesus was sure, he knew, he trusted that the works of the Father told him uh, that these things were to come and would come. Like raising Lazarus from the dead, his own resurrection and pouring out his Holy Spirit. These were all things yet to come, but Jesus had confidence in his Father's love that they would come through, that he would come through. How many of us are holding on to promises and doubting? Just be assured that the Father's love is for us and that his promises are yes and amen. Hold on to him, hold on to the promises that you have in him. Jesus, number six, Jesus and his Father work together in the same business, the business of giving life and bringing the dead to life. 
John uh, 5.21 and John 5.24 and 29. 5.21 says, For as the Father raises the dead and gives life, so also the Son gives life to whom he will. And 24 to 29, Most surely I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment but has passed from death into life. Most assuredly I say to you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself and he has given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the Son of Man. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth, those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. Powerful words by Jesus. But Jesus knew exactly what business he was in, the same as the Father. Number seven, the Father gives great responsibility to Jesus. The Son of Man who is God's own son, has lived life inside human skin. He had become the incarnation of God. He walked where we walk, experienced what we experience, and suffered beyond what we suffer. He's been misunderstood and he's been mistreated in a way no one else has in all of human history. This makes him perfectly qualified to judge. So the Father has given him the authority to execute judgment because he is the son of man. John 5, 22 and 27, if you want to reference that. The eighth point out of my 10 points, I'm going through these as quickly as I can. There is no no competitive spirit between Jesus and the Father. There is perfect harmony. Each recognise the other has been honoured equally. Jesus says, he, Jesus, is to be honoured just as they honour the Father who sent him, John 5, 23. They saw each other as equal and took pleasure in seeing the other honoured. They also claim uh, to be, uh, with, to be uh, they also this claim to equality with the Father by Jesus is another claim of deity because no one has been honoured in the same way as God. Isaiah 42 verse 8 says this, I am the Lord, That is my name. All my glory I will not give to another, nor my praise to carved images. Isaiah 48 verse 11. For my own sake, for my own sake, I will do it. For now, for how should my name be profaned? I will not give my glory to another. Jesus and the Father work in unity. There's no competitive spirit. And we see that by... God honouring Jesus with the highest name, the name which is above every other name. That that name, every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. No competitive spirit, just honour and honour and love and love for one another. Number nine, Jesus lives in his Father's will. John 5, uh, 5 verse 30, I seek not my will, but the will of him who sent me. He is equal in deity as part of the Trinity, but submissive in his role, as I've already mentioned. Jesus never performed a miracle on his own behalf. He only became angry in defence of others, never on his own behalf. He didn't own a house or a horse or a giant screen TV. His money from his ministry went to the poor. Jesus didn't live for himself. He lived for his Father. How many times did you see the disciples waiting for Jesus because he went to spend time in his father's presence. Can you imagine, let's be honest, being a disciple of Jesus would have been, oh, off he goes again to pray. How long is he going to be this time? That's right. Who's going to go to the shops? Who's going to go to the market? Who's going to go and do this? Because you know what Jesus is like? He's going to spend another four or five hours with his dad in prayer. But he was showing them. He was imitating them, imitating to them what their relationship should be like. Everything he did was according to the will of his Father, and his Father's will was for Jesus to communicate his Father's love to each and every one of us. Jesus' validation, point number 10, comes from his Father. 
John the Baptist bore witness to Jesus, but Jesus says that his testimony, Jesus cares about, isn't just from man. He said he only brought up John's testimony to those listening that they might be saved. But the testimony Jesus cares about is greater than that of John. The testimony that matters to Jesus is God's testimony of him. And God spoke audibly, affirming and validating his son. Matthew 3, 13 to 17. Matthew 7, verses 1 to 8. And John 12, 27 to 30. God spoke these words at the first, at the middle, and at the last parts of Jesus' public ministry. When he was baptised, when he stood in transfiguration, and just before he was to go to the cross. God validated the Son. We've all, most of us in this room, been baptised. None of us have had an experience of baptism like Jesus did. We want to see the Trinity in action. Well, in that verse alone, in Jesus being baptised, you see the Trinity in one place. God the Son going down, coming up out of the waters. The Holy Spirit descending like a dove upon him. And then God the Father saying, this is my Son who I love. For those who struggle with the Trinity, just show them Jesus' baptism, because it's there in the pages, right in the front, <coughs> for every single one of them to see. But we're celebrating Father's Day. We're celebrating the love of a father. John 3, 16 to 17 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. What a heavenly father to give his son for us. Paul writes in Romans 5 verse 8, but God demonstrates his own love towards us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And Alan pinched my scripture early on this morning. Matthew 7 verse 11, that if then, being evil, you know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask of him? Today as we celebrate Father's Day, we celebrate a heavenly Father who's poured out his love for us, who gave his one and only Son for us that we might be able to come into relationship with him. And through Jesus Christ, who demonstrates what our relationship should be like with our heavenly Father, we need to imitate him because their relationship was perfect. Let's pray together, church. Lord, we thank you that we can come and celebrate today our Heavenly Father because, Lord Jesus, you paid the price. You bridged the gap between us and our Heavenly Father, Lord, where sin had separated us. Your love, your grace, your mercy, your cross, has bridged the gap between us and our Heavenly Father. Lord, we thank you for those, Lord, who are led by the Spirit of God are called the sons of God. Lord, that we've been adopted into your family. And Lord, I pray, Lord, that we would go deeper in our relationship with you. Lord, that our relationship would grow and develop and be stronger, Lord, just as your relationship, Lord Jesus, with your Father. There was trust there was love, there was confidence, there was no competitive edge. Lord, I pray, help us to love the Father, Lord Jesus, just as you love him. Lord, I pray for anyone who's listened to this message, Lord, who's watched this online, who doesn't know you as Lord and Saviour, Lord, I pray that they would open up their hearts to receive you today. Lord, we thank you for the greatest love that you've ever shown us by giving us your Son. Lord, that they would respond can open up their lives to him as Lord and Saviour. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God.